Hey guys, this is Aaron from RF Digital. Today I'm going to be showing you how to send and receive multiple data types between your Simly devices. I have with me the Simly Development Kit, number RFD 77803, a USB extension cable, and my laptop. Let's get started. For this example, we'll be using an RGB LED shield, USB shield, AAA battery shield, 29 pin GPIO breakout board, and a 7 pin GPIO breakout board. We'll start with programming our transmitter. Assemble your transmitter using the 7 pin GPIO breakout board, the RGB LED shield, and the USB shield. Make sure the pins line up correctly. Then plug that into your USB extension cable. In your Arduino IDE, navigate to Tools, Port, and make sure that the correct COM port is selected for your assembly device. Open a new sketch and save it as multiple underscore transmitter. First, we need to include our assembly COM header file. Add this line before the void setup function. Include assemblycom.h. In this video, we'll be creating a data structure called payload structure. Let's define that now. Add a structure definition called payload structure. With struct payload structure. Data structures allow you to store multiple data types in the same memory location. First, we'll add a character called counter. Characters are stored as one byte in memory, and since they're unsigned, can store any value from 0 to 255. Our counter variable will increment each time we send data to the receiving node. Next, we'll add a 16-bit integer named val a. This will be a signed integer, so type int 16 underscore t val a. Next, we'll add a 32-bit signed integer named val b. Type int 32 underscore t val b. Last, let's add a variable to store our temperature. We'll name this variable temp, and it will be of type float. We need to add one last thing to our structure definition. After the final curly bracket, put a space and add underscore, underscore, attribute, underscore, underscore, two parentheses, packed, and two end parentheses. Then add a semicolon. Since our structure is not aligned to an even amount of bytes, we add the packed attribute to hint to the compiler to pack it in memory. Next, we need to define a variable to hold our payload. This variable will be of data type payload structure that we defined earlier. Type payload structure payload. Next, we need to initialize our hardware. Add a comment to your code indicating this for anyone reading at a later date. Button A is on GPIO 5. Let's indicate that in our code. Const integer button A equals 5. Do the same for button B. Const integer button B equals 6. We need to initialize these pins as inputs. Let's set both our buttons to inputs since we'll be reading data from them. In the void setup function, add pin mode button A input. Do the same for button B. Since we'll be printing to the serial monitor, let's start our serial communication at 9600 baud. Serial.begin, 9600. We're done in our setup function. Let's go to the loop function. With each loop, we're going to increment our counter variable. Type payload.counter plus equals 1. The plus equals expression takes the value already stored in payload.counter and increments it by the value on the right hand side, 1. Next, we need to read our button values. Add a comment to indicate this. Let's read button A's value and store it in payload.val A. Type payload.val A equals digital read button A. Do the same for button B. Payload.val B equals digital read button B. Lastly, we'll read our temperature. Add a comment about this too. Payload.temp 
equals symbly underscore temperature. The symbly underscore temperature function takes one argument, Celsius or Fahrenheit. For this example, we'll use Fahrenheit. For debugging purposes, we'll add some things to the serial monitor. First, let's print our counter value. Type serial.print counter. Add another line with serial.print line payload dot counter. We'll make this a decimal. This function prints the value of the payload dot counter variable in a decimal format, then adds a new line character. Let's do the same for val A and val B. Type serial dot print button A value. Then print the contents of the val A variable. Serial dot print line payload dot val A in decimal format. Again, do the same for button B. Last, we want to print our temperature. So do the same as above, but use the payload.temp variable. Let's add another new line for pretty output. Let's add communications functionality. Back in the setup function, under our serial.begin command, add simplycom.mode equals long range. This tells simplycom to use 12 millisecond latency. Next, add simplycom.begin to start our communications functionality. Back in our loop function, under the serial.print commands, we need to send our data. Add simplycom.send. Our first argument will be a pointer to the payload variable. Add this with ampersand payload. Right now, this points to a variable of payload structure data type. Since we'll read our memory in bytes, let's convert this to point to a character array. In parentheses, add character star. Our second argument needs to be the size in bytes of our payload. So type size of payload. For this example, we'll add a delay of 1000 milliseconds. Compile and upload your sketch and open the serial monitor. You should see your counter value increasing, button A value as zero, button B value as zero, and the current temperature in Fahrenheit. Now if we press button A, you should see button A value equal one. Do the same for button B, and it will also equal one. Press them at the same time, and both values should be one. Let's power this device externally. Close the serial monitor and unplug your assembly from the USB extension cable. Remove the USB shield and plug your assembly into the AAA battery shield, making sure the headers line up correctly. Flick the switch on the side and we're externally powered. We'll now program our receiver. Add the USB shield to the 29 GPIO breakout board, making sure the pin headers line up correctly. Plug that into the USB extension cable and we're ready to program. In the Arduino IDE, open a new sketch and save it as multiple underscore receiver. Again, we need to include our assemblycom header file. Just like the last sketch, we need to define our payload structure data type. If you'd like to copy and paste from the other sketch, you may. We also need to define a variable of this data type, 
to hold the received data. I'm going to name mine received. Now let's move on to our setup function. Since we'll be printing to the serial monitor again, type serial.begin 9600. Next, let's start our communications functionality. Simblycom.mode equals long range. Lastly, type simblycom.begin. Since we'll be receiving data from another assembly, we need to add the simbly underscore on receive function. Underneath the void loop function, add void simblycom underscore on receive. This function passes four arguments. The first is an unsigned integer we'll call ESN. That's our electronic serial number. Each assembly device has a unique ESN. Next is our payload. Third is the length of our payload. And fourth, our RSSI. The first thing we need to do in the onReceive function is copy our payload to the received variable. We'll use the memcopy command and pass three arguments. The first argument is a pointer to the received variable. Our second argument will be the pointer we received named payload. And the third will be the length of that payload. Above our setup function, we're going to add a volatile boolean called rx underscore flag and initialize it as false. This will indicate whether or not we've received a packet. In the simblycom underscore onReceive function, after we've copied our payload, let's set the rx flag to true. Now let's go to our loop. First we need to see if we received a packet. Let's check using an if statement with the condition of rx underscore flag equals true. If this condition is true, we're going to print our payload to the serial monitor. First, let's print our counter value. Next, we'll print the value of both button A and button B. Last, let's print our temperature value. For pretty output, add another blank line. Now that we've printed our received payload, we can set our RX flag to false and wait for the next payload. Compile and upload your sketch to your receiver and open the serial monitor. You should see your counter value, button A, button B, and temperature value printed to the screen. Back on your transmitter, if you press button A, you should see the button A value change to 1. The same should apply for button B. Pressing them at the same time should change both values to 1. You can find more documentation at simply.com.